Hello and welcome back to Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robin Sun. Please do like and comment and subscribe and share this video. Thank you. Well, I have been working on lots of um, black and white embroideries. And I thought this one would be fun to work on with you this morning, <coughs> today. All right, you see that right there, there's a little untaught. There we go. I think that was it. Yep. All right. We're all set. Okay. So I was making the other, um, sort of mandala, um, doodle mandala embroidery, black and white. Um, yeah. And my intention for these is to um, print them, to copy them, you know, on a copier, and uh, print them out and maybe make a book like I'm doing with the blue and white embroideries. Whoops. Um, and yes, this thread, why did I do that? Okay. Um, okay. So I want to I don't know what I was thinking that I double stitched that stitch. La la la. Um, all right, let's see if I can talk and sew at the same time. So the plan here is to make um, an embroidery that will be pretty in black and white. And um, then the um, idea I had is that it would be great to make this particular embroidery so that you can color in all the spaces like a coloring mandala, because it's going to be printed on paper. So you could take little crayons or watercolor markers or colored pencils or something and um, and uh, color that in. That would be really fun, I think. I was thinking about uh, doing that as I got partway through this one. And, you know, you could color in these little flower petals, these little um, triangles, more flower petals. You could color like the circle itself in. But, like, these lines don't come all the way to the edges of the lines, so, I don't know. I mean, you can still color this one, but here's a chevron. Did I do that right? There's this, you know, row of chevrons, and um, but they don't have anything enclosing it. So I thought... What if I did this a little bit more to the point of 
making sure that I was making shapes that were enclosed the way we make coloring books. And then I could make an embroidered journal that has coloring pages. So I guess the idea is just to keep letting the ideas flow. I hope you are well. We are coming up on the Asian celebration of the autumn full moon. It is the harvest moon and in countries like China and Korea, Vietnam, I don't know if Japan celebrates this particular one, um, but the um, folks gather together in a very similar way to uh, the American celebration of Thanksgiving. Um, for us in the Northern Hemisphere, September is usually the second harvest, the first harvest being celebrated um, along about the 2nd of August. Um, and then the, the second harvest is the uh, autumn equinox. And then the third harvest is All Hallows. But, um, so... So anyway, in the, I don't know, maybe American European tradition, this is second harvest coming up. And in Asian cultures, this is um, their harvest moon. And people come from wherever they might be living uh, back to their family homes and they... You know, it's just like American Thanksgiving. They eat a lot and they hang out with their families and their friends and have parties and stay up late talking with each other. And yeah, it's a lot like American Thanksgiving. All right. So I think what I wanted to do next was another row of, uh, this is backstitch here. So I wanted to do another row of backstitch to kind of enclose so we can draw not just inside the um, triangles, but also around them and have a sense of enclosed space, which to color. I've been driving up and down my road, you know, just going to the post office and the grocery store and the dump and, um, and reveling in the trees. Uh, here in this part of Maine, we get about, we can barely squeak in about five months of leaves on the trees. Come on. And then the rest of the year we don't. And I sometimes consider the possibility of 
you know, what would it be like to live in a place where, you know, there were only a couple of months of not having leaves on the trees. I remember living out in San Francisco and there was, there was a kind of, I actually lived in the Bay Area, not, well, I did live in San Francisco, but this particular memory is from Oakland, not San Francisco. And, um, yeah, I just remember being sort of like this, the seasons weren't as vividly marked as they are here in New England. And I was sort of confused about time. And uh, there, there is some change to the seasons. It's just not as dramatic as it is here in New England. Yeah, and I'm not really sure that I was as happy with that. I think I grew up with the drama of the four seasons and um, yeah and I enjoyed that so I'm not really sure that I would like to live anywhere else and yeah so my choice I think I'm kind of appreciative of living a little outside the megalopolis, too. I was laughing with somebody else who was a person of a certain age. I think it was another woman. And we were sort of laughing at how um, it has become comfortable um, now that we are not in our direct youth, um, to have parking places wherever you go. And, you know, maybe you have to walk a block, but you don't have to walk six. And, uh, lots of times where I live, you don't even have to pay for parking. Um, And that certainly is a benefit too, but mostly just way, way less traffic. And I remember being in my 20s and I lived in Boston and I loved it. I lived just outside of DC for, I think it was actually less than a year. Um, and, but most of my 20s I lived in Boston And I loved that. It was very exciting. I didn't mind. I didn't have a car, so I took the tea everywhere. Um, that was fine. There was a lot of freedom in not having to deal with a car. And the tea is very effective in Boston. So... Uh, you know, it works. I mean, taking public transportation on the coast of Maine is kind of ridiculous. It doesn't, there isn't much. Yeah, so anyway, long conversation. I'm pretty happy where I am, even though I am going to miss the leaves. So I'm just helping myself remember that I love the leaves on the trees and while they are still here I can enjoy driving down the road that I live on the trees sort of come up and you know make a little canopy over the road it's very cool and I love it there is such a sense of abundance So I hope you love where you live too.
Yeah, see how this is getting enclosed here. So um, you can color the triangles and you can color, you know, around the triangles in a different color. Make it all very pretty. I mean, with this other mandala, I really enjoy sewing the the lazy daisy stitch in the chain stitch, which is the same thing, just attached or not. Um, I love the blanket stitch. Actually, I could put the blanket stitch in here as long as I had, you know, a row of stitches to um, enclose it a little more tightly here. There's sort of air in between. Um, I could do this one again too, you know, different rows, three rows of uh, the back stitch. Maybe make them a little bit wider so you could color in there. Um, this would be an interesting stitch to enclose that so I have two blocks of color. Anyway. Anyway, we'll see as I go along. Maybe I'll get so many ideas for different ways to do stitches that I'll be able to make a whole bunch of coloring mandalas. One of the things I've been thinking about is um, lots of times uh, when you can draw a mandala, People use a rounded shape, a little petal, or um, and to do that with stitches, I'd have to either have to do a whole lot of little back stitches, which is fine. It's just a lot of work, um, or I could do couching maybe. But it's so much easier to do straight stitches. I was thinking of doing a little pentagram or a little house shape. You know, little pen pentagrams all around the edge. <sighs> we'll see. actually haven't even designed the next row and we're getting very close to needing a design for the next row. You know what I think I'd like is maybe a couple of rows of back stitching because if I do another a, a row of shapes maybe pentacles um I might like it to have some distance, visual distance from the triangle so that it's not just like shape, 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 straight out. There's a little, I don't know, difference. Or I could do the um, blanket stitch buttonhole stitch out here. Oh, that's an idea. Then I could have lots of little narrow rectangles. That's a good idea. Now, come to think of it, I like the idea of doing at least one more row of back stitching. And then I could do the so back stitching. stitch and one row blanket and maybe 
some French knots. Just as a break and then the pentacles. That'll get me out of ways. That'll be good. So now you know what I'll be doing for a while. I have been needful of the quiet and the calm of stitching. Um, I've had a situation to deal with. I don't know. Does this happen for anybody else? Um, I had some equipment from a... Um, I was dealing with a big corporation and there were questions about what stuff was where. And uh, I've been trying to figure that out. And I'm dealing with a big corporation, so it's a little hard for them to kind of care what's going on in my life. Um, so I'm finding that it's being a little challenging to um, get answers and stuff like that and I get so distraught when these things happen I um, I feel pretty powerless I mean I'm dealing with a big corporation they truly don't care about one piece of equipment from some random person in Maine um, And I feel powerless and very frustrated by that. And I'm aware that I can kind of be a bitch in this life. And I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry for doing that. I mean, sometimes that's necessary, but I think a lot of times I've overused the skill. And, uh... And I'm sorry for the people I've heard, especially because when you're dealing with a, when one is dealing with a big corporation, it's not the, the people on the telephone that, I mean, they don't have any power to fix things. So, um, I don't think they're trained to have all that much power to fix things. So, anyway, I personally get distraught, and I've been using this situation as a as a learning tool for what happens to me when I feel um, sort of thrown out into the ocean of consciousness, um, and I've been trying to figure out how to deal with um, myself and the situation and find a fruitful answer that will keep them happy and keep me without some enormous large charge for something I didn't do. Um, Yeah, so I've been sewing a lot. I've been sewing a lot. And it works. It um, calms me down and helps me maintain kindness and civility. So, yes, sewing is a good thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe if you don't like sewing, it would be a bad thing. It would just frustrate you. But 
It doesn't frustrate me. It makes me feel very calm and coming up with ideas of what to do next come pretty easily to me. So, all is well. How are we doing for time? Ooh, I should stop. Well, here we are. I wish you whatever helps make you feel calm and strong and intelligent. I think we should celebrate that in ourselves much more often. We humans are pretty clever. Yeah, so I celebrate that in me and in you and in everybody. And I blow out these wishes across the planet. May we all feel our intelligence and our cleverness. And I wish you a good week and I'll see you next time. Alrighty. Bye.